Hey everybody, this is David Breen again from Animal Cartoons blog. That's animalcartoons.wordpress.com. The official website is thelastmice.com. And today I want to go over how to make realistic dynamic hair on well, any character. But on this, this is a character that I made for a commercial. And uh, this has nothing to do with The Last Mice, but this technique will most certainly be used on other characters I make that do have hair that I want to look awesome. So, here's how you do it. I'll just go up here. Well, first of all, I'm sure you want to see the final product. So here's what the actual hair looks like as it animates. And uh, it's a little choppy because of the the um, screen capture, but I'll put up a link to the video so you can watch it. But you can see the hair looks pretty cool. Alright, so to make this hair, we'll go to the hair. Here's all the settings. Take a snapshot, just like I did with the grass tutorial. Lots of hair, and here's those hair segments. That that The hair segments makes it so that you get these straight lines when they curve and you don't see steps in them. Hair passes I've got to three so it kind of blurs it out a little bit. Um, and then once again fly away, clumping, nothing. Here's the frizz parameters, kink, there's that. Pre-computed, there's the uh, gravity, stiffness, Root hold, so the settings for that. No multi strand parameters. Uh, by default, these are there are some of these. I just turn them all off. This can really increase your render time because this is kind of like post. Like it takes all the hair you already have that you see, and then this kind of extrapolates more hair that's just kind of random that's kind of sprawled about. And it could be used for some things, maybe like a rug, but it takes a long time to render this stuff and to process it. And for this straight hair on this character, it's not needed. So, here's the specularity, the glossiness, everything there. Um, and then a couple tips in order to, to actually style the hair. Uh, the best method is to get the hair using the uh, styling tools. You want to stand the hair. Basically, when you're first starting, just click attenuate, and that will, or pop selected actually, pop selected will just delete all the hair and give you kind of like the beginning of a chia pet. And then from there, you can go to the translate, which is the default. Select your brush, make your brush big, zoom out a little bit stand the hair up. Um, but you know that's kind of the old way to do it. You really don't need to go in here and fuss with specific styling. There is a really quick way to uh, to do this. Um, but you do need hair to work with. That's true. So instead of translate, actually what it is is scale. Same thing I just said. Zoom out, get a big brush, and use scale. And it will if you put the brush right in the center and you drag out, it will scale all of the hair and make it big enough so that it will come down to whatever length you want. And then what you do is you just hit the, uh, it's down here, there's a recomb. So after you've scaled it up and made it the length you need, hit recomb and it will comb it out and it will look kind of funky, but it will be usable now. And then from there, you just go into dynamics and you set the collisions as polygons and you add, you just click add and then you click on the objects that you want the hair to to actually interact with and so the jacket or her uh, her clothes, it's going to hit those and bounce off of those it's going to bounce off the chair, her head um, so all of those different things the hair is going to actually hit so it's important that you set those Okay, and then in order to get the hair to, using these dynamic properties, to get the hair to naturally fall onto the face so that you can work with it and style it from there, um, which is obviously the best natural way to, to go about cutting hair anyway, uh, what, it's a little tricky 
because these settings I have here is just for the hair once it's been styled like this for it to kind of keep its root hold and be just stiff enough to kind of sway and move around and follow dynamically as she moves her head but these are not the settings you want to initially have the default combed hair fall into place for that you just gotta mess with this yourself and set the, uh, the root hold and the stiffness way down sometimes even to 0 0.05 or something really low that way the hair will fall and uh, and be very flexible for you in order to do that you change those settings initially hit live and you will see it all fall down and it will um, your timeline will go by as it's doing this but it's not creating keyframes it's just having it as a temporary uh, it's keeping it in temporary memory so as it's live it's animating it, it's falling into place when it looks how you want it you tap the escape key and it will at give you options it will say do you want to reset the simulation or do you want to basically freeze it and if you click freeze it will save the current position that your hair is in in that simulation I didn't know about that for a while and uh, they don't have a button here for it or anything you just have to know and so you tap escape and that happens got it in the, uh, the position you want then you can go into your styling hair and you can do things like puff roots here on the top to get it to kind of puff out so it's not perfectly following the skull and uh, you go in here and you can use the cut tool and cut the bangs make sure you have ignore back hairs on so it doesn't cut the hair in the back of her head and uh, those are just some things to keep in mind and you can allow the dynamics to work with you and do some of the, the ma major work so that you as an artist can go in and have fun styling the hair instead of trying to drag everything around endlessly the uh, hair itself in this instance there's lots of ways to do it on my character Max the mouse the hair is actually coming directly off of his head mesh on this one I have a scalp I just basically cloned the top part of her head and then linked it to her head bone so that it follows along and then I hit it so it's not visible to the camera and then we just have the hair coming out of that and you know it's just another way to do it to do it okay and you can also turn off the guides and you can display the hair instead and this of course it, it makes it look like you know that's not what it looks like but it just gives you an idea of the basic color and what you have the root and uh, the, the tip set to look like and it takes up a lot of memory so it's just kind of a quick peek well, okay what does it look like generally and then go back to the guides. All right. So in order to, uh, there are problems where the hair, the shadows will flicker on the hair, and this is really important. So to fix that, so that the shadows don't flicker, there are two things you need to check. So let's just zoom out. Well, here's her hand that I had animating the commercial. <laughs> so. Basically, what we want to do is we have these lights, these Omni lights, and they're set to mental ray shadow maps. I didn't like ray trace shadows on the hair because it was too perfect and it would leave these uh, lines, the shadow lines on her face that looked really bad. So we switch to mental ray shadow map. You go to the shadow, mental ray shadow map. Map size 8000, samples 512. I'm not saying those are perfect, but that that is what worked for me. Transparent shadows, um, if you enable this, it will make the, uh, the shadows a little more precise. And so you'll actually see the, the outlines of the hair strands on her face instead of just a blur. Um, I thought I turned that off in the final production. No, I guess not. Uh, Alright, so... This is a good thing to have. 
And so that's the deal with the shadows. That'll make it so the shadows aren't bouncing around so much. But that's that pertains just to the shadows on her face. Now when it comes to the actual hair itself, we want to go to, as far as, um, like what you'll see, is you'll see that the, each hair strand is not calculated individually by the light shining on it. The, sh the light can't see the details of every strand of hair, so it kind of just averages out clumps of hair and then when you render it you see the light kind of flashing around all crazy like and it will do that the only way to fix that is to go under this option on your light called hair light uh, ATTR hair light attributor attributes hair light attributes yeah attributor <laughs> okay and uh, this one is not set to light the hair but if we go to this one yeah, this one is set to light the hair. This one was just for the hand, and uh, I've got another one over here. This one as well is set to light the hair from both directions. And I did this just to get off topic for a second to avoid needing to turn on Final Gather. Final Gather is nice; it picks up all the light and bounces them, averages everything, but it takes a long time to render that and to calculate it. So to fake the Final Gather and not get such harsh shadows, you can put a light on both sides of the character that you, like in this case I'm trying to get a close-up of her face, so I put two lights on either side of her face, and I just tone this one way down, and I bump this one up. And you can see this one is set to light the hair, and this one here is also, you have to have this one on to light the hair as well or else you'll get dark patches because there's no other light over here. And so resolution, that's the key in order to get the light to hit the hair correctly and to look static, to not jump around. This is originally set to something like 1200 so just bump that up. Same with the fuzz. The fuzz uh, kind of acts like the same thing as the hair passes here, kind of fuzzes it out, but in a different way, from a different place. And so I would just bump the fuzz up as well. This is like a 2 at default, so bump that up to like 12 and 5500 for the resolution. Um, and this will get your hair to look pretty freaking cool. Only problem is when I rendered out a sequence of like 200 frames of these settings, the computer after about 50, 60 frames, would, the mental ray would run into memory errors and crash. So I'm not sure if it's just my computer. It's a pretty nice computer. It's brand new. So I think that there's just some kind of memory issue with these kind of settings. But really, it's the only way to get the hair to look right. Um, so if anybody knows if anything I'm doing wrong, please let me know. But that is all the basics for how to get hair to look good on a character. Alright, I hope you learned something. Thanks.